Comandante or Commander is the story of the captain Salvatore Todaro, a captain of the Italian submarine that during the Second World War, after sinking the enemy's boat, he was saving the enemies. For the law of war, he had to sink the boats, but for the law of sea, he had to save lives. Battles, water scenes, having a submarine in the middle of the ocean, rescuing and fighting. The show needed this to look real, and they were having difficulties finding a way to do the submarine stuff in the mid-Atlantic practically. It came very quickly apparent that we could not do green screen or blue screen. So luckily, we're in the moment of LED walls, Unreal Engine, and a way to actually do this in a real-time on-set sort of way. So we ended up in coming up with a paradigm that we're calling a near real-time workflow. We wanted to do it in real time and we wanted to be able to show the director full quality as quickly as possible. He wants to see how it works on the day, feel like he's made the right selects and walk away knowing he's got it. So we started by pre-vising and pre two of the big sequences that would have to be done in real-time visual effects. The really exciting thing about the workflow that Kevin and the team have come up with is that uh, it's primarily using light uh, and low-res LED screen. For example, in this scenario where we're having to deal with a water tank, high-res LED screen, two mil, one mil even screens won't work in this scenario because they're indoor screens. This screen is going to get wet. One of the big benefits of virtual production the actual light and the reflections are something that sometimes get overlooked. So working with the team from Foundry and with Kevin and all of the production team, we found it really, really exciting because this workflow will allow for low-res LED screens to be used in particular scenarios. One of the big advantages, again, on this particular workflow is uh, the implementation of Unreal Engine and Nuke. Again, we found this a really exciting crossover. Uh, and looking at the Foundry workflow, this is now capturing a lot of that data that would otherwise be lost. I think this is a very, very valid workflow that's capturing all of those, that metadata, but also in a form that's useful. So we're here uh, taking part in another test for the Commandante project. Uh, in particular, we're looking to accomplish two things here. So first thing is to try to solve some of the problems that are inherent in the virtual production. Uh, how to make sure that the, the highest quality of the images are captured on the day and that you're able to take that home. Um, but most importantly, that the director, the DP and other filmmakers are able to see the results of their work immediately so that post-production can begin as soon as the director says it. So when the camera's rolling, all of the metadata from camera tracks to lens information to camera data is all being streamed and recorded in Unreal. We're also capturing the image stream into Nuke uh, directly is in a, in a kind of a take recorder. Once the, the take is finished, the images are, are delivered straight into Nuke immediately. And now we start to, now we're in post. We can then use Nuke's uh, new Unreal Reader tool to render uh, uh, from Unreal that take into Nuke. And then you can start beginning compositing. And the first thing that we want to do is show the director immediately um, what they just shot. And this is what it kind of looks like. We start by using the, the Unreal Reader tool, which is uh, just released in Nuke, uh, to render a higher resolution and higher quality version of the, the Unreal tape. We start merging the, the virtual and physical in a very simple overlay, incredibly important to the directors and producers because they can make decisions on it, they can act on this. We need to separate this actor here from the background to replace the background. And we're gonna do this inside of Nuke using uh, an AI tool called Copycat, where you can shoot against a green or blue screen. Uh, so you turn the LED wall to green or blue, you ask the actor to do a bunch of rehearsal takes of movements that are representative of what you're going to do. We then bring that footage into Nuke. We use Nuke's keying tools to generate you know, a high quality key and map. We add this, this image to some synthetic backgrounds. We then use that as a data set for copycat. And this training takes a number of minutes, you know, roughly sort of 20 minutes. And this is an example of the quality. And you can see here that the hair is, is captured. And the final thing then, again, we're in comp. We're, in, we're doing post-production now. So when we when we look down here and we notice that there weren't any shadows in the feed originally, we were able to comp these in very, very quickly in a matter of minutes. There's an issue with tracking where we lost track for, for a couple of frames. We were able to really quickly snap the track back in here and using very simple 2D comp trick. That's what you can do in a matter of minutes. So imagine what you can do then if you've got more time.